How is everybody doing? Welcome back to another episode of The Banker Next Door. I am your host, Dr. Joe Berkowitz. Today, I wanted to review the FDIC's 2020, uh, 2024, uh, basically, uh, Small Business Lending Survey. Uh, this was a survey that was actually conducted in 2022, uh, but just came out just now. I'm not sure why it was like two years behind, but it had it did have some interesting results. So I basically just want to show you guys the report, uh, go over some of the key findings in here, because I thought there was was some very interesting things in here. So I just want to read you guys a little uh, blurb here before we get into this. So, um, so community banks and large banks use different small business info. So community banks use more difficult to quantify. I like that. I love this difficult to quantify <laughs> underwriting information gathered through relationships where large banks tend to focus more heavily on quantitative information from credit bureaus, according to the FDIC's uh, business, small business lending survey. Uh, so this survey was conducted in 2022 and it found that nine in 10 small banks, but only four in 10 large banks have loan decision makers actually meet with applicants. That's very interesting. Uh, it also found small banks have perceived advantages in lending, flexi lending flexibility and in lending to marginal borrowers or those who lack documentation, which may include startups. Uh, this is very true. Um, Let's see here. The survey also found community banks are more likely to compete regularly with credit unions, while large banks are more likely to compete regularly with fintech lenders, credit card issuers, and other financing companies. Uh, when managing the risk of lending to startups, large banks more often rely on government guarantees such as those provided by the Small Business Administration, while small banks more often use soft information gleaned from meeting with applicants. So, um, I think uh, the first thing I would I would probably mention here is underwriting data. Um, underwriting data can include what's e what's can include uh, soft data and hard data. So soft data is basically all of the information that you co would collect on a client. Uh, key characteristic, you know, what's the you know you talk about the five C's of credit. One of them is is character. You know, what is the character of the individual? Uh, they talk about how in one of the findings, community banks are more likely uh, or, or I should say, wait, hang on a second. Uh, where did it say that? Um, or, did I lose? Oh, uh, nine in 10 small banks have loan decision makers meet with applicants. Yes, I think that's absolutely true because you're, again, you're trying to collect that soft data. You're trying to understand the person across the table from you, you know, what's the, what is their, what, what do they do? Are they, do they do a lot of stuff in the community? Like, are they, how, how are they, you know, connected to different things? Maybe they have a large family, maybe the, maybe their brother's doing this and their sister's doing that and their cousin's doing this and their parents uh, do, you know, maybe their parents run the church and, and, you know, the brother owns a company down the street and uh, cousin Mike is the police chief and, and that kind of thing. So, you know, you want to find out what are what are the business ties, to, you know, what are their ties to the community? What is their family involvement, uh, community involvement, all the different things like that? Maybe you might find out that they are uh, run a very important nonprofit down the street, you know, those, those kind of things. But all of those tangible intangible details, you know, maybe you maybe as a community banker, which is not uncommon, uh, you know, you, you get to know multiple generations of families, you know, you're, you know, you know, uh, if, if you got a bank that's been around for 70, 80, 90, 100 years, uh, it's very likely you've banked multiple generations of families. So, you you know, you you have relationships that can go back decades. Um, and, you know, you can, like I said, you, you can, having all that kind of information is critical to basically understanding. And that's why it goes back to say that, like, oh, well, you know. You, you know, smaller banks have more, you know, if it, it found you know, small banks have perceived advantages in lending flexibility and in lending to marginal borrowers or those who lack documentation, which may include startups. Like, in other words, because banks collect that soft data, you know, it gives them and it gives them an, an, an edge basically in knowing your customer. Uh, basically knowing like, okay, who, who can we, who are we confident that we can lend money to versus who are we or not. Now, hard data, on the other hand, that is basically tax returns, financial statements, bank statements, you know, anything that can be quantified, quantified in a, in a, in a, a paper format, thus the hard data, uh, you know, so generally, you know, um, 
you know, if you're collecting a bunch of uh, reports on a, on a, on a customer, if you're getting accounts receivable, accounts aging, um, uh, accounts payable, inventory reports, maybe you're getting work in progress reports for like a, a small manufacturer, that kind of thing. Um, so you could be getting all those reports monthly or quarterly. Uh, that's good, hard data. You could say you could be getting a tax return every year. You could be getting reviewed, uh, compiled or audited financial statements from the customer, which are, which are always fantastic, always good to get. Um, so anything like that, would be quantified as hard data. Now, I think that uh, you know most of your banks out there use a combination of hard and soft data when they're underwriting. They're going, you know, they're going to look at a company's tax returns, but then they're also going to look at the individual. Who is the individual? Like, what's their, what is their character? What's our relationship with them? What's their relationship in the community? Do we, do we know this person? Do we know their family? You know, what, what do we, you know, what do we know? Um, they're going to put all that into their, into their underwriting. You know, whereas a, a bigger bank is like they said, I mean, they're focused on more, you know, quantitative information from, from credit bureaus. Um, you know, they're relying more solely on those kind of things. Like what they're putting heavier weight on basically just a credit score, a repayment history, size of the business, those, those kind of, those kind of, uh, quantitative factors where, you know, again, they're not really looking at that stuff. So, in a very real way, it becomes more black and white. Like, you know, either, either you, you meet the criteria that's in the box or you don't. And if you do, you're in, if you don't, you know, you're out. Whereas, you know, again, with a smaller bank, because they're collecting that soft data, uh, it might, you know, might be a different story there. So, um, but, uh, but also I, I just thought that I just found that funny when it said it, but difficult to quantify underwriting information. <laughs> um, well, uh, yeah, I mean, if you if you if you want to if you want to say like you know try to turn some of that information into quantitative information, like yeah, you're not going to get there. Is it qualitative? Yes, absolutely. Um, but but it's great information and it impacts the credit in a very real way, and it's it's a great information that you can include in your underwriting. But to call that uh, difficult to quantify, like, I think you know it's yeah, I, I I don't understand how saying like oh. You know, we we know this person's family, and we lent money to their dad and their grandfather and their grandmom and this and that. Like like what you know, uh, I, I don't. I, yeah, I don't see how that's hard to uh, quantify. Difficult to quantify information. Um, okay, but let's. All right, so that so that's that. A kind of little blurb I had. This was the blurb I got that got me interested in this survey because I saw this and I was like, oh, this is a good this is a good uh, opportunity to kind of talk about some of the differences between community banks and big banks and fintechs and why people still like dealing with community banks. And, and also to talk about that data that goes into underwriting, the soft data versus the hard data, how they're both basically used in, in combination in most community banks and their underwriting process. So, so here's the report right here. This is a 2024 FDIC Small Business Lending Survey. Uh, we come down here, it kind of has, you know, acknowledgements. It's, this is a, a, uh, a pretty mammoth size, 148 page report. Uh, Let's see here. We got a table of contents here. Uh, we get into a list of tables and figures. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Uh, we got key terms. Let's see if they go. Hold on, sir. Okay, here. This is interesting. So, okay, so so they have they have here right here soft information, information about a borrower or business that is difficult to quantify or represent numerically and therefore is not easily transmitted between bank decision makers. Uh, examples include soundness of a business plan, experience in the industry, and knowledge of general market conditions. Uh, I just, I, I don't know why they say that not easily transmitted between bank decision makers. Uh, no, it is very easily transmitted. <laughs> you say, yeah, we know, we know Sharon from down the street. She's awesome. We, we want to do business with her. <laughs> it's e easily, easily transmitted. Uh, Let's see. And then they have they have hard information here. Information about a borrower or business that is typically quantifiable or numerical and therefore easily transmitted between bank decision makers. Examples include credit scores, financial statements, and the value of collateral. Banks can often collect this information with literal or no personal interaction with the borrower. Yeah, true. Uh, they got any other interesting? Uh, no, nah, not really. <clears throat> um. Oh, they have trend. They do have transactional lending. Uh, 
So transactional lending, a way of lending that relies on hard or numerical information when underwriting. This lending is typically associated with larger banks. For more details, see relationship and transactional lending in section one. So uh, tr yeah, transactional lending is is uh, basically another way of, of saying uh, like automated lending. Um, you know, basically they're going to take your loan application, run it through a, you know, an automated loan system that's going to pull your credit report, maybe submit, you know, maybe you submit your tax returns into it. It'll put together uh, cash flow, calculate collateral numbers, things like that. And then basically spit out a credit score and say, based on this credit score, you should approve or decline the credit. But that's an important distinction. So let's just let's just look at this. So this is the executive summary. Let's just take a look at this real quick. So uh, the 2022 uh, SBLS asked banks to consider their lending to borrowers that meet the bank's internal definition of a small business and to consider a wide range of lending to small businesses, including owner occupied commercial real estate and traditional commercial and industrial loans, otherwise C and I C and I loans. Uh, this approach captured small business lending that may be missed by other well-known regulatory or conventional definitions. Overall, the 2022 survey finds that technology has not replaced the relationship-oriented and staff-intensive nature of small business lending that is focused locally around branches. That's fascinating, and that's so true. Let me say that again. Finds that technology has not, keyword there, not replaced the relationship oriented and staff intensive nature of small business lending that is focused locally around branches. However, small and large banks continue to manage the risks of lending to small businesses differently for smaller loans with small banks relying on soft information gathered through relationships to a greater extent than large banks do. Um, and, you know, and then, and then we get into some of the key findings here, which I'm going to go into in just a second. I, I just want, I just want to make the point that, relationship lending as it is it's in the very culture it's at the core of every community bank um and you know i did actually when, when i got my doctorate uh the dissertation i did was on loan automation that was my entire dissertation and i did a whole lot of research on looking at you know the culture of community banks and whether community banks would would adopt uh loan automation into the small business lending process and it was a very, I mean, it's very fascinating study, fascinating research. Uh, I'll definitely have to go over and share it with everybody in, a, in another episode. But um, you know, one of the things that really came out in in a very crystal clear fashion was how in deeply ingrained relationship lending is at the core of every community bank, and you know, and and that's why it can be difficult. You're kind of to to try to plug in a loan automation system sometimes can be like putting a round peg in a square hole because of that very nature of what is at the heart and soul of every community bank. And I think that's what a lot of, you know, FinTech providers, uh, they don't, they, they just can't quite understand that or don't fully grasp how deep that is. And that's why they, they can get uh, frustrated with selling sometimes to small banks and basically saying, I don't understand why, why does a small bank want to implement our, our fancy dandy automated system that will make their life so much easier and will lower their cost of underwriting and make things more efficient and help them make more money and all that, which is all good and great. But there's just a way that banks do things. I mean, lend, lending is a science, but it's also an art at the same time. Um, and the collection of that small data uh, it is critical. It's critical to your decision making process. It's critical to how you make decisions, who you do and don't give loans to. It, 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 there's there's a lot of uh, things there, and and small business customers should be very happy that banks still do it that way because that because that affords the ability for a lot of people to get loans that otherwise would not get them. So okay, anyway, so let's take a quick look at this real quick. So most banks lend to small businesses and retain the risk. So almost all banks participate in small business lending, which commonly includes loans of at least one million. Uh, banks generally retain the risk of small business loans they make. Yes, they do. They keep the loans. They are called portfolio lenders, meaning they keep all the loans that they make on their books. Uh, approval structures are fairly flat and approval times are generally fast, especially for small and simple loans. Uh, approval structures, again, are typically fat, flat with executives and board members often directly involved at small banks. Uh, approval times are fast, especially for small loans at large banks. Um, 
Technology has not replaced staff intensive and relationship oriented practices. About half of banks were using or considering using fintech in their small business lending process. So uh, in 2022, three in 10 banks used fintech within their lending process and an additional two in 10 were discussing or developing its use. So so there you go. So it is it is getting a foothold and building more and more. Uh, banks emphasize in-person and high-touch practices for developing relationships. The vast majority of banks engaged in high-touch practices and believe these practices to be crucial for generating and maintaining relationships. Uh, banks emphasize relationships even when the banks differ in size, underwriting practice, and fintech usage. Yes, absolutely what I, what I just said. Uh, the competitive advantages of banks reflect their investment in staff and local communities. So banks perceive their primary competitive advantages to be customer service, relationship with customers, and speed of service. So both small and large banks use relationship-oriented approach based on customer service and cultivating relationships and describe the approach as a key competitive advantage. Uh, you will often hear it said in banking that uh, people do not bank with banks, they bank with people. So in other words, the relationship becomes the key thing. You're going to bank at the, you're going to go to that bank and you're going to do business there with the person there that you have the relationship with. That's why your relationship, your, your relationship lenders, your branch managers are so key to the business because they're the ones that bring the customers in. They're the ones that have the relationships with the customers that keep them at the bank. Um, Outside of credit cards, automated lending remains uncommon in the industry and is used almost exclusively for smaller loans. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that. You know, one in 10 banks have a credit scoring system that can partially or fully automate the underwriting of some non-credit uh, non card lending. So uh, lending is largely local and focused around branch locations. You know, the small business borrowers of a bank are generally located close to the bank's branch location. I would absolutely agree with that. Uh, Branches and on-site visits are key conduits for small business credit. Yes, absolutely. Uh, the primary factors limiting the extent of geographic markets related to competitive pressures and the challenges of maintaining relationships. Banks typically compete with similar sized or smaller local banks, though competition with non-banks seems to be increasing. So banks generally compete with banks of a similar or smaller size. Uh, banks rarely compete intensively with banks that do not have a branch presence in their market. That's true. Uh, competition with credit unions and other non-banks seems to have increased. Yes, I would definitely agree with that. Uh, there are key differences between small and large banks in small business lending. So compared to large banks, small banks generally use more soft information in their underwriting process. Yes, we talked about that. Uh, most large banks make smaller loans using techniques that emphasize information from credit bureaus rather than more quantitative uh, factors. In other words, yeah, because they use more loan automation. Um, small banks are, per are perceived by other banks as more flexible and able to lend to marginal borrowers. Large banks are more likely than small banks to make small loans without collateral. Yes, this is true. Um, Bigger banks, like you know, uh, you know, a lot of places, you know, you'll go into and you'll say, "Hey, I need a fifty thousand dollar line of credit. I need a seventy five thousand dollar line of credit." And the bigger bank is able to just basically make that with, you know, basically taking what's called a UCC lien on your business assets. So they're they so it, technically they're filing collateral, but also very technically it's unsecured because that collateral is not going to cover you know your loan if it goes bad. Um, so. But the bigger banks could do that because they're able to take more risk because they can absorb that loss. You know, if you if you have a if you have a billion dollar bank and you make a uh, thousand, you know, fifty thousand dollar loans and and even you know a fraction, you know, five percent, ten percent of those loans go bad, you have a problem. Um, you know, but if if that goes at Wells Fargo, that's like a blip on the screen. Like they don't they they're not worried about it. Um, so, and then basically says here, you know, to manage the risk of lending to startups, large banks more often rely on government guarantees, while small banks more often use soft information gleaned from meeting with applicants. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's somewhat true. I think the small banks still use an SBA guarantees just as, just as well. So, okay. So that, so that's basically the key findings of the report. Um, 
you know, I, I, like I said, I, I thought I thought that report was really interesting to point out some of that stuff. And it finally gave me a chance to talk a little bit about, you know, kind of the, the difference in underwriting between small banks and big banks and how different data is used, uh, how the relationship is, is a key focal point there and how, you know, smaller banks have a tendency to compete more with credit unions as opposed to bigger banks or maybe even fintechs. Uh, branch presence is still a huge thing. For small business owners, they want to be able to go to a branch. They want to be able to talk to somebody. They want to be able to open an account there. They want to be able to talk to somebody about a loan, get a loan at the bank, apply for a loan at the bank. So those are all still still very very critical factors. So, uh, so I, I hope I hope everybody th I, you know again I hope maybe some people or somebody out here finds this interesting. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, like I said, I thought this I thought this survey was really good. I, I really wanted it, it. Definitely had some things in that I'd been wanting to talk about for a while. So uh, so again, I hope people found it interesting. I will put a link to the survey in the description down below if you want to go check it out. So, but I will wrap up basically by saying if you like this episode, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe as that helps the channel. Uh, please make sure to leave your comments down below as I always enjoy getting back to people. Please remember we are on Rumble, YouTube, and all major podcast platforms. Don't forget tomorrow night is um, live stream, Friday night live stream, 7 p.m. on YouTube. Uh, please go on. Please make a note to, to check that out. Uh, you know, make, again, if you subscribe, you'll get the notification when the live stream is about to start. So definitely go on and check that out and check, on, check out some of the other content and great episodes that I put up on the channel. And I hope to see everybody again real soon. Thanks.